who do you feel like has the most to gain from winning a championship this year? Like, what one player you feel like has the most to gain to out of winning a championship? There's some real interesting because you could like, bro. There's so many different ways you can go. You can go like Bron, he mm-hmm. wins. That's five. That's you know, goat conversation for people who do, who don't have him as the goat. Or you can say someone like. I don't know, Jason Tatum getting his first ring. Like, bro, there's so many different ways you can go with it. So, yeah. I'm real curious to see what your answer on this. I would say um, there's a couple of different ways you can definitely take it, right? Because <clears throat> apparently if Steph Curry get another ring, he is a, a <laughs> GOAT player. He's the greatest ever, according not, to me. Not LeBron off of Mount Rushmore. That, <laughs> that, bro, that was an insane topic. Oh, my God. Oh, um, but realistically, when I think about it, right, like there's been some nasty narratives around Jokic, right? Like you're you're a two-time MVP, but what do you have to show for it in the playoffs? If he mm-hmm. won a chip this year, that shut a lot of that, that extra talk up. I don't think it probably really validate him, which it shouldn't even need to happen because right, like you don't you don't love his play style or whatever. Like he's not the most flashiest player. He doesn't get on social, he doesn't do a lot of talking, but at the end of the day, like, he really takes over games in a variety of ways, even in just the series alone. Like, we've seen him put up 40 and from a scoring perspective almost and only have five assists. And last night he had a 30-point triple-double. In the first game he had, like, 15 assists. So, like, he fills that gap of whatever is needed from him on a night-to-night basis um, at the same time, like, being unstoppable to, to stop, apparently, on offense mm-hmm. with, with, you know, from all three levels of the court. Um, so I think that would be huge for him. Same thing, really kind of case for Joel in that, you know, argument of like, you've been one of the best bigs in the league for some years now. MVP this season could get us, you know, a, a championship this year and probably a finals MVP if they were able to pull that one off. Like that would, you know, really start to cement your legacy, right, in that case. So I think really either of those two guys would, would go a long way at kind of shifting how their narrative is portrayed as like, you know, you're great. They're great in the regular season. They can do all this that now both of them have hardware to back it up. Um, but one of them is able to get, you know, something out of the postseason. you know, either one of them winning a championship would likely be their finals MVP too. So you get the chip, mm-hmm. you get the MVP. Um, so I think really either two of them probably have the, the most to gain outside of Steph. Yeah, that's a good question. What do you think? Who do you think has the the most to gain out of this playoff run? Um, man, I I said I said Steph is the easiest answer, but I'm I'm trying to be a little bit different. Um, when I look at this, because obviously the easiest answer is like Steph, LeBron. Honestly, you a little side note. I don't think LeBron has even out of the players left in the NBA or in in the playoffs. I don't even think he's top five just because I feel like as of right now, it's either you think he's the GOAT or you think he's the second greatest player of all time. I don't think people who like who are like diehard MJ fans with this title, especially the fact that he's going to be the second best player on the team. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that would catapult him into the GOAT conversation. So I don't even think yeah. he's in this conversation right now. Unless he got um, another MVP, that'd be crazy. But if he, yeah, if he's, if he all of a sudden just starts turning into that 2020 LeBron, then, then now it's a little bit different, but I don't really see that happening. Mm-hmm. But, I'm gonna say something different. I'm gonna say Jimmy Butler, just because <laughs> that would be a wild if, one if, too. Yeah. If you think about it, you think about it. They have they're playing seven undrafted players right now. They just beat the number one seed as the eighth seed. Regardless, Giannis hurt, cool, whatever. They still beat the number one seed. He like he's already known at least for the player or the people in our generation who has watched him play as undoubtedly one of the best playoff performers in this generation of players just because just because of the step up that he takes from the regular season to the postseason I mean he would have had to go to the number one seed and had beat the Knicks then had beat Boston Sixers whatever Mm -hmm. and goes to the finals then had to beat what Lakers Golden State would already be a crazy crazy finals between them two if he if they play the Nuggets they would have to beat the number one seed some say some miracle happens and the Suns make it out. That means he would have bit, beat Kevin Durant, Devin Booger. So it's like, I mean, he cements himself as a Hall of Famer for sure, mm-hmm. which I feel like, honestly, right now, he has a case that he's already a Hall of Famer. 
but that cements yeah. it 100. Mm-hmm. percent It's he'll 100 percent get the finals MVP if he wins the finals. So that would probably make it go from people in our generation who watch him knowing that he's one of the best playoff performers to like people who look back 20 some years from now yep. looking back like oh no Jimmy Butler he was really that guy when it came to the playoffs. So I, I'll say Jimmy Butler. I feel like that's a, that's an interesting one. No, that's a good one for sure because, like you said, he is definitely more low-key in the regular season. People watching now know what he's able to do as a playoff riser, but if he got some hardware to go along with that, that the run that he would have to go on now to go through Giannis, then the Knicks team, then either Tatum and Brown or Joel and James. And right. who, whoever comes out of the West, there's names. Like if it's the Lakers, it has to be LeBron and AD or <laughs> right. Steph, Clay, and Dre or – or Jokic and the whole Nuggets team in the one seat out west, or KD and D book. Like, that is a gauntlet to have run through mm-hmm. for a team that was three minutes away from not even making the playoffs. <laughs> right, right, bro. And you know, if they, he goes on this playoff run, that, and that means he's putting up crazy 35 plus 40 point games. So, this, like, if he was, was to go on this playoff run, it could be seen as one of the best playoff runs of all time. Just because of the way they would have to win would mean he would have to be the best player on the court in all of these series. Yep. Which is, man, like, because I I think right now, like I said, I think, say, all right, say they beat the Knicks, say they lose to Boston, whoever. I still feel like 10 – 15, 20 years down the line, people will remember Jimmy Butler, obviously, but they'll people who haven't watched him will probably be like, oh, yeah, he, he was a solid player. Like, he was a good player. And the only people who would really know about his switch between the regular season and the postseason will be people like us who actually watched him play. So right. if he was to go on a deep, like, finals run, win the finals, win finals MVP, I feel like that would cement him as, like, one of the best playoff performers ever. And people would remember him as far as looking back 20-something years from now. That – would etch himself also as like he would get in that small group conversation of heat players like D Wade, Alonzo Mourning, like all right. for one ring, but just because of how ridiculous it would be to attain. Um, because like when you look back on it, like LeBron is probably like not probably LeBron is the best player to ever wear a heat uniform. But, like, mm-hmm. D-Wade is the best Miami Heat player. He's like, the greatest Heat player, yeah. Right. We know the distinction there because, like, mm-hmm. LeBron was the best, but, like, D-Wade is Wade County for a reason, right? Right. Um, Jimmy would put himself into that same conversation. It's like, look what I just did for this franchise, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, definitely that would be a crazy one in terms of what that would do for him. That'd be wild. I'm just, I'm just like thinking of some of the names now in the playoffs. Like, it's no <laughs> bad options, really. Like, everyone nah, stands so much to gain. It feels mm-hmm. like maybe more so than than prior years. Oh, uh, as far as like what what you would gain from this championship, right? And I think it, some of that also is maybe just due to like how wide open it is because. Um, in previous years, right, there has been like typically a clear cut favorite, and even if you go back to like you know, the, the Cavs Warriors years where it was like every year we're seeing the same ones. Like these types of conversations don't happen as much, but like there are people that are, there are definitely teams that are favorited when you look at, you know, like the Nuggets right out West, like how dominant they've been in the first two series, but everything is still pretty much up in the air. I don't think that there's a consensus clear cut pick. Like if I had to just put my money, it would not just be like a snap decision for me. Just like, oh yeah, here's, on Denver or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that definitely plays into, you know, how many additional, how much additional, you know, legacy material people could gain off of of getting a ring here. 